ES Audio. Hi, I'm Rochelle Travers and this is the Evening Standards Tech and Science Daily. Coming up, mummies with golden tongues are found in Egypt. But first... Three, two, one, boosters in ignition and liftoff of Artemis 1. Since launching, NASA's Artemis 1 Orion capsule has broken a record. It's reached the farthest distance from Earth, shattering the record for the maximum distance a spacecraft designed to carry humans has ever been. The space agency confirmed that Orion had reached the midpoint of its uncrewed mission around the Moon, about 270,000 miles from Earth. The craft, which is at the heart of the historic Artemis 1 mission, aims to test the capsule to see if it's ready to safely host humans. The trial run is part of the program which aims to return astronauts to the moon for the first time since the 1970s. The government has been accused of weakening the online safety bill after removing measures forcing social media sites to take down material deemed legal but harmful. Labour ministers criticised the move which came after some Conservative MPs said it could threaten free speech and lead to political censorship. The government is arguing that removing this from the much-delayed bill would help to finally get it into law. Charities have responded saying this is a hugely backward step and accuse the government of snatching defeat from the jaws of victory before the bill returns to Parliament next week. Meanwhile, a survey suggests that more than 1.6 million social media accounts are owned by underage children. The Advertising Standards Authority found that around 93% of young people aged 11 to 17 say they have an account with Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, Twitch, Twitter or YouTube, with a quarter misreporting their age when doing so. Culture Secretary Michelle Donnellan, speaking on GB News, said that the changes they're introducing to the online safety bill will help tackle this issue. We know that all the big platforms set to age 13 as the age of which you can then join the platform, but we know that most of them aren't really adhering to that. In fact, often they promote their platform to kids of 10, 9, 8, which is disgraceful. Next. A huge multi-million pound UK trial involving COVID scientists is being set up to help rapidly find flu treatments. Professor Anthony Gordon from Imperial College London is the chief investigator of the REMAT-CAP flu trial. He says they want to learn from the experience over COVID. It seems very relevant as we're faced with potentially a larger seasonal flu epidemic this year than previous years. To learn those lessons that we've learnt during COVID where we developed rapid treatments because we had to. Professor Gordon told us it's a chance to experiment with combinations of different drugs. Some of these treatments are uh, available, but as I said, we don't know what is the right combination. Should they be given to all patients or just certain groups? He's hopeful the trial results will provide a boost for the NHS. We would hope, as I said, a national collaboration like this will provide results that could be implemented immediately in the NHS, saving lives, freeing up resources, hopefully, as we face a difficult winter ahead. The trial will run across 150 UK hospitals for the next two years. The crypto lender BlockFi has filed for bankruptcy in the US as the fallout of the collapse of the cryptocurrency exchange FTX continues. BlockFi says it has $256.9 million cash in hand, and according to court documents, its creditors include FTX itself, to which it owes $275 million. The company said it was seeking court protection to restructure, settle its debts, and recover money for investors. Now... Australia is arguing against the Great Barrier Reef's proposed endangered status. The country's environment minister has said that her government will lobby against a recommendation by a UN panel that it should be listed as a World Heritage Site that is in danger. UNESCO has said the world's biggest coral reef ecosystem has been significantly impacted by climate change and the warming of the oceans. The country has lobbied for years to keep the reef off the endangered list as it could lead to losing heritage status and impact tourism. Let's go to the ads. Coming up, mummies with golden tongues and more musk drama. Whilst you're here, why not give us a rating follow? Welcome back. 
Mummies with golden tongues have been discovered in Egypt. They were found in an ancient cemetery about 40 miles north of Cairo and date back between 300 BC and 640 AD. The Egyptian archaeological mission of the Supreme Council for Archaeology uncovered an extension of a cemetery which includes tombs dating back to different periods of time. Experts believe that the mummy's real tongues were removed during the embalming process and replaced with a gold chip. So the deceased could speak to the ancient Egyptian god of Osiris, who was the lord of the underworld. A study suggests a mother's high-fat diet may rewire male and female babies' brains differently. Researchers at Duke University in America studied pregnant mice on high-fat diets and found that it could lead to increased vulnerability to neurological disorders in offspring by disrupting communication between the placenta and the fetal brain. They found that a mother's high-fat diet triggers immune cells in the developing brains of male mouse pups to overeat the mood-influencing chemical serotonin, leading to depressed-like behavior. The scientists suggest a similar thing may also be happening in humans. And finally, another day, another Elon Musk drama. The billionaire claims that Apple is threatening to boot Twitter from its app store, which would be a massive hit to the social media site. The feud comes as many companies have stopped spending on the platform, following concerns about the new CEO's content moderation plans for the site. Apple has not yet publicly responded to the accusation. You're up to date. Come back at 4pm for the Leader Podcast from the Evening Standard. We'll be back tomorrow at 1pm. See you then.